This is OXDF, and today I'm looking at the recent 2021 run code competition from, uh, la it was actually from last week. And uh, runcode.ninja, I, I love this site. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a, more of a programming style CTF than a uh, like hacking thing, but uh, it brings together all sorts of different aspects of that. Um, because it's maybe not as well known, I wanted to take a minute and sort of go over what, what it looks like and how it works. Um, so I'm on the 2021 competition site. Um, there is a, uh, you know, they do have a runcode.ninja uh, main site that was, it used to be up all the time and uh, they took it down because they had some issues and I'm told it's going to come back soon. And if it does, that'll be awesome um, because it's a really cool resource if you want to practice your programming. Um, and I definitely recommend checking it out whenever it comes back. Uh, but for now, uh, this is the site for the... Um, 2021 competition that happened, uh, I think November 11th. And uh, I was going to show some solutions, but I figured I might as well also give an overview of how it works and what you do in run code. Um, so I'll actually start with, I'm already logged in here. Um, I'll start under the help under the FAQ. Uh, I'm not going to read through all these. It's definitely worth reading through. Um, but you know, the main point of these challenges is they tell you they, they want, they're going to give you some input and some, some output, and you have to submit a program to them that will generate that output. Um, so, uh, you know, number, number eight here, you know, uh, you, you, it's important that your file, your different, depending what language you're going to write in, that the extension matches the language you're writing. Um, and you know, they, if you come down, they get the list of, uh, shebang, uh, headers as well that you can put in your scripts to make sure that it runs correctly. So, you know, I, I will almost, I will typically be using Python three. So I, you know, I'll use that, uh, user bin env Python three. Uh, yeah, another one that's worth talking about. Um, so my code keeps getting incorrect match. Um, so you submit your code and it runs and it's either going to tell you, you you succeeded, uh, or it's going to say your output was not right. Or it's going to say like it died while running, you know, which typically means you crash somehow. Um, so what they do is they typically are going to give you some examples, example input and example output, and you want to make sure that matches perfectly. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second as well. Um, but then they also, there's gonna be different input that they don't show you that you have to also handle well. And so this is where you really have to think, go back and think through details and say, okay, well, what else could they be giving me and what could be tripping me up? Um, you know, so things, you know, the examples they give, white space, new lines, floats, integers, negative numbers, et cetera. Um, so you really want to think through the use cases of what, you know, and this is a real real, real world skill here of, you know, what is my customer expecting? What, are they, what does the user of this code expect me to do? Um, and making sure you handle all of those. Um, so and again, I'll go into examples of that in a minute. Uh, you know, there's another one here. Um, let's see, where's this expected hash thing? Um, and so they give you this one, you know, so you have the solve.py on some input and they give you this Python one-liner that basically um, reads from standard in, uh, strips off white space on the end, uh, and pat then computes a SHA-1 hash of it. Um, and that's how they show to check it. And so what you'll see, um, come here to one of the challenges. Let's go open up by category. Uh, we'll go into one of the tutorials. Here's hello world. Um, so what, you know, what they're looking for here is you're going to run your solution. It doesn't take any input in this case. Uh, they expect it to print hello, comma, world, exclamation point, uh, and they give you a SHA-1 hash. And so what, what this means is, in fact, if you, um, I, I keep this in my bash RC. Um, so I just alias, alias that to run code hash. Um, the only difference I make is I make sure to call out Python 2 here because I actually have Python, just Python being Python 3. Um, and then it won't quite work as the same, but, uh, so, you know, let's say if I do echo, hello, comma, world, like a type, uh, exclamation point bang. And I put that into run code hash, and it gives me a hash of OA, OA, nine F. Uh, and the expected hash they're looking for here is OA, OA, 9F, ending in 5E10. So I can feel confident that at least with the example input I'm using here, or in this in this specific, really simple case, uh, where I'm just doing echo hello world, um, where there's no input, uh, I can be confident that it matches. Now, again, I still have to think through, are there other scenarios? Is there different inputs they could give me um, that will be more complicated uh, prompts than this? Uh, but at least you, you want you, at least at this point, I can say I've verified um, that I handled this solution correctly. Uh, 
And if not, then maybe I start, you know, I might save hello world to a file, save my output to a file, diff them, start to compare them, see if I can find small differences. So um, the other thing I was going to show real quick in this overview, um, in addition to the FAQ, they have a full on manual docs, um, all sorts of good stuff you can read through here. Um, under supported languages, you can, you can write in tons of these different languages here. Um, I've been mostly doing Python when I'm rushing and I'm trying, you know, if it's a limited two day competition and I'm just trying to see if I can compete um, and I mean, my time's certainly limited, uh, I'm going to write in Python because what I'm most comfortable with. Um, but if you want to learn something new, this is a really cool opportunity to come here and start playing with things. Um, and then of course, if you click on, let's see, here's Python three, um, they've actually got a handful of third party modules already installed here. Um, and so you can look in here and there's a fair number of, uh, but that's, you know, you don't want to use something that's not installed there because if you do, uh, when you send it to the server and the server tries to run it, you're just going to crash and you're going to get a dies while running. Uh, so uh, I'll give it, you know, I wanted to give, I'm not going to go through a lot of the, uh, a lot of the challenges are relatively on the easier side, but it's, it's you know, it's again, it's a chance to practice the coding part of it. Um, so I'm not going to make videos for all of the, you know, everything I solved, but I thought I would come in, come in here and at least to pick one of the easy ones just at the end of this video to show kind of how this works. So um, we'll do RG, RRR, GGG, BBG checking. Um, let's go into the site. So you recently lost a bet at work. Uh, now you have to write some code that re reads RGB values and prints out the color of the highest value in the tuple uh, that provided you an RGB. And the will come in a file with one tuple per line. So here they give you uh, example input. Um, so I'll come over here actually, Let's see, make dir run, run code of them, RGB input text. And let's go grab this and save it. So we have it. That's what we're going to work off of. Okay. Looks good. And then, oops, let's see. Move RGB into run code. Let's go into run code and run tmux. So we've got a nice panes there. And so now we want to write something and the output is going to look like this. We're just going to print colors. So, all right, that shouldn't be too hard. Um, so we'll do vim rgb.py, put in our shebang. Um, I'm going to definitely want to import sys because I'm going to, you know, in Python, sys is what you use to read the command line arguments. And then, so I'm going to do a with open uh, arg, uh, let's try sys.argv to access the command line arguments. One will be the first argument. Open it as read as f, and then uh, lines equals f dot read lines. Simple enough. Um, so then I'll do a simple for line in lines. Now I'm going to read it. Now I've read it. In, I'm going to read in a line here. So I'm going to get a tuple. Um, and the easiest. There's a million. I'm sure there's a million ways to do this. Um, when I'm trying to do something really quick and dirty here, I can, it looks like, you know, I can always assume the first and last characters are these parentheses. Um, so I'm going to do something like, come down here, I'll show you in a Python window. Um, if we have something that looks like line equals that string. If I do line dot strip, uh, like that, I think should work. Let's try that. Yeah, so line.strip is going to take anything that I pass in in any characters in this string, and it's going to remove those from the front and end of the string. So in this case, I wanted to get rid of the parentheses, so I just got rid of them that way. So now I can do, if I want to keep that line.strip and then do a split on colon, uh, comma space, so now I'm going to get those in there. And then the quick and dirty here, I'm just going to do int x or x in and get those over to integers. So these right here are strings, um, but I want to do numerical comparisons. So I'm going to convert them to integers and you can see now they don't have the quote marks around them. Um, and all I did here was this is called a uh, list comprehension. Um, I could have just as easily done a four X in line dot strip that split colon new line and, and built up from there. But this puts a for loop basically in all, all in one line. And so what I'm basically doing here is I've got this thing line dot strip, which I already know has three items. I'm going to say four X in that. So for each of these three values, I'm going to set X to that value, and then I'm going to take int of that value. And then the result is going to be a, another list that comes out of that. And so that's how I, that's how I get out these three things. 
All right, so so for line and lines, let's 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 start with that. So we'll get uh, vowels equals, and we'll just paste this right up there. And then we we need the index here. So what we really want to do is say max vowels, and we want to do vowels dot index of max vowels. And that would be position. Uh, actually, that'd be color. Well, that'd be position. We'll we'll call that position. And so now, come down here and say, you know, if I, if I say up here, vowels equals, um, and now I want to do what is the, what is the index of? So it's telling me one is the highest, so zero, one, two, and that looks pretty good actually. Um, that's what I expected. Um, so it's getting the maximum value. In this case, it's going to find two fifty one, and then it's getting the index in that array of two fifty one. So zero, one, two. So the answer is one. Um, so what I last need up here is like a constant type of uh, conversion from a zero, one, or two into a uh, red, blue, green, red, green, blue. We'll, we'll make sure to check that. Um, so we'll call this colors, and we'll have that equal to. And in this case, we can just do a simple because we're going to have zero, one, and two. We can just do a simple uh, uh, array. So it's going to be red, green. Blue. Oops. Let's see if I can do this without messing it up. There we go. So now what I can do if once I've defined that, I can do print uh, colors sub position, and that looks pretty good. Let's go down here and run this. We'll get out of the, there and do Python RGB .py. and we have our RGB text I believe, or what was the uh, underscore input. We pass in. Oh, and we got it. Okay, that's good. This is normal. Let's see what happens. So invalid literal for int where it equals a new line. That's interesting. I'm not quite sure. So I anytime I see it complaining about a new line, um, f dot read lines is going to read in lines one at a time, breaking at new at new line. Um, but it's not going to. It's going to leave the new line character on there. Um, so. Let's actually line dot strip. Let's see if we include if we fix that just by stripping the new line off in our strip call there. That seems to have worked. Um, so we can go back here and compare it to the text from the expected output: green, green, red, blue, 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 red, blue. Looks pretty good. Um, but let's you know this is where we put it into our run code hash and see it eight o eight d five a. That looks pretty good. And on the end, I got 5B, 5, 5BEB. That looks good too. Um, so that seems to solve the problem. So I can come here and check it out. Um, we'll go to run code, rgb.py, submit it. Now it says I've already solved it, but let's, you know. You see right here, it actually shows up that it just submitted and ran successfully, and I've solved the challenge. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the introduction to run code and the solution for the uh, really the, the rather easy challenge. Um, like I said, this is a really cool way to practice coding, and I really hope their website comes back up soon where you can do this all the time. But if not, definitely keep an eye on them for Twitter and things like that to see when they have their next competition. Um, it's definitely worth joining. So uh, with that, I will uh, end out this one. Thanks for staying till the end.